So can we do it? That is the question on everyone's minds. Can we start breaking these levels and head to new all-time highs on the S&P and the NASDAQ? And there's a lot of news today, ladies and gentlemen, that we're going to be talking about to give us insight whether this is going to happen or not. Today, I would say that all the bears went the way of the dinosaur because you had your shot for the second time in a row and you completely missed. Now, me being a long-term bear, I talk about the yield curve on this channel. I talk about a lot of bearish things that happen in the economy. But guess what? The stock market is not the economy, so stop trading like the economy. We're going to be talking about both. We're going to give you the scoop on everything. We're going to give you the scoop on why Warren Buffett nearly had a heart attack today. And we'll get into that in just a moment. We're going to be talking about OPEC and so much more today. So hope you guys are in store for a good one. So first of all, for all those out there that come to this channel every single day to figure out what the bloody hell is the market going to be doing. And simply put it, the market today had a doozy. We go to the 15 minute candles. We can clearly see on open. We were like, yay, markets open and basically we went straight down into the 12 o'clock hour nine o'clock hit and it was just down 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 right we broke all the way down to the previous weekly area that i was talking about for the range that we really can't lose 524 38 and then everyone kind of just stepped in at that magical one o'clock hour and then boomtown baby so now let's dive in a little bit into this uh, figure out why this actually happened right kind of looking at some of the data that came out today and we can clearly see we got some the opec meeting but we'll get into that in just a second that really didn't drive markets and we do have biden buying back oil along with that so that's going to be a fun one but before i digress let's talk about what happened on the s p right s p global u.s manufacturing pmi comes in a little bit better than expected and the rest just come in atrocious Manufacturing employment ticked up versus staying in contraction territory for May, along with the PMI stayed in contraction territory. So kind of a mixed bag of events here. But what was startling was the Atlanta Fed GDP now. We had previously 2.7, now 1.8, kind of coinciding with what we're seeing from the GDP revisions for the other area, right? The main GDP number came out the last week at 1.3. Now we're seeing a contraction in this metric as well. So everything's pointing to contraction in the economy. But the market does not care, right? So the market got a mixed bag of news today where it basically said manufacturing PMI is going down contraction territory that's bullish for the Fed. That's all they care about is, is the Fed going to cut rates? Is the Fed going to cut rates? That's all this market cares about. And we do have two of the bigger banks this week that are basically expecting to cut rates. I believe it is the Bank of England and also the ECB. The ECB is the one you guys got to watch because they're the ones that are most closest to the Fed and everyone's expecting them to cut rates. So tomorrow on Tuesday, we have Jolt job opening. So Guys, make sure you stay tuned for that at 10 o'clock. That's going to be coming out. I don't think it's going to move the market at all. I think the job numbers at this point are so minute in the minds of traders that unless they show some ridiculousness, we're not going to see it move at all. And if you guys wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button and having bell notifications on, that way you can catch us when we stream live tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern and on Thursday, where we're going to be going over the job report. We're going to be going over, did the S&P break above the magical number that we're going to talk about in just a moment? And last but not least, we'll also have, if you are down there, hit the like button. It really helps the channel out. So now let's talk about the level, right? Is the S&P going to get back above 530.27? That is going to be the level that we're going to be looking at tomorrow for that because, well, frankly, we had a lot of progress today. I, I personally believe that all the bears are dead. There's no bears left because no one is taking the bullish side more than the bulls and they are running with it, right? They ran over everyone that was looking bearish today, pushing it back up, right? You had from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock completely um, downwards and then Magical one o'clock hour hits, one to three o'clock, wipe out all the losses of the day, close S&P roughly flat, and even the NASDAQ, right? Let's take a look at the NASDAQ, had a similar story, breaking down below 449.34, still pivoting above the 451.85 level, and continuing higher, right? So we're starting to see higher highs essentially now, and we're starting to see higher lows. So that's a bullish pattern out there, like if I didn't see one. And same story like the S&P, right? Nine o'clock hits, slam down. One o'clock hits, slam up. It's basically the narrative that we've been seeing 
in the March, in March on the way up. We saw this in November of last year. We saw this in June, July, and August of last year where it was any bad news basically got wiped out at one o'clock. So we're gonna keep an eye on that pattern as we see how things evolve because it's definitely gonna be an interesting one to see, right? We bounced and chopped around this level. We violated some levels, regained them today. So what was basically driving the markets? Well, if you were worried about the market, boy, oh boy, if you owned Berkshire Hathaway stock, you were livid today when you woke up. Seeing Berkshire Hathaway stock down 99.97%, wow. Well, now that it was a glitch, right? And the New York Stock Exchange did fix it. New York Stock Exchange says, technical issue that caused Berkshire Hathaway to be displayed down 99% is fixed. Well, that's not reassuring in any way, shape, or form that you allowed one of the biggest stocks on per share market value to trade at 99 below what it was trading at. So yeah, Warren Buffett definitely probably looked at it and said, what are you idiots doing? Fix this, right? Just probably called him up and said, fix it, you dum-dums, fix it now. But anyway, that's I find that funny, right? And I hope you guys found it funny too, where what would you do? And throw it in the comment section below if you saw your stock trading a 99.97% down on the day, would you even be worried or would you just be considering being like, what are you idiots doing down there, right? Like questioning, like what on earth? But anyway, we also have OPEC, right? OPEC falls on OPEC production cuts as demand worries surface, right? Now, OPEC is cutting into the rest of this year, which I'm tuning my horn for that, right? I basically said OPEC most likely will cut into the end of this year and possibly into 2025. They left the door open for themselves to continue voluntary cuts, but they're unwinding them after 20, uh, 25 starts. So the bulls are taking, oil bulls are basically saying, hey, that means that there's demand weakness. If OPEC was seeing that they could continuously strain the markets with lower supply, that the price would go higher, they're basically seeing demand weakness and they're interpreting that as demand weakness, as you can see. If we jump over here, we can see crude did fall today with that news coming out. However, it's still trading in the range of $77, right? It's been down in this area for quite some time. If we go to the daily chart, we've been chopping around this $78, $77 point for quite some time. However, the price movement now is looking like it wants to break to the downside. We're going to have to be looking if we violate that $75 a barrel number because it will be indication of oil being bearish. When oil is bearish, the economy broadly suffers, right? That just means that there's more indicators out there that are saying that there is a bearish economy. There's a flattening in GDP. There's a contraction in oil and contraction in copper, all things leading to recessionary tendencies, but the market does not care. We could be in a blow off top. There's definitely money to be made to the upside and there's definitely money to be made to the downside. We don't have to always stay to one side of the trade. And also one of the things that I did not believe my eyes when I saw it, and this tidbit goes out to you guys that stayed to the end of the video, which is the US trade Treasury is buying back bonds. Well, we thought that the Fed was going to have their short term program for the banks reignited. And we were talking about when it closed that, hey, this was the end and they were probably going to bring it back. Well, they found a way to bring it back, but not the way I thought they would bring it back. And we're going to be talking about this. Heresy Financial did an excellent video on this. So if you guys want to go over to his channel and see that more in depth, I'm just going to give you the very high level overview and how this impacts you as a consumer of bonds if you're in that trade, right? So they're basically going to be buying longer dated bonds. So they're going to be looking at buying the 10 and the 30 year that were maturing basically down around this area, but they're bringing that maturity date up, right? So you're going to get for less time holding it, the full payment on that bond. Okay. That's fantastic for you. But here's the problem. Those bonds were issued at significantly lower percentages. So the government is rolling that debt over into higher, more expensive debt. Well, why does that make sense, right? So if I have to, I pay you back $105, but now I have to go borrow that $105 at a higher interest rate. So instead of paying you at that percentage that I would pay you in a year, let's say, I'm gonna one, pay you the money now, and then two, have to pay more money in the long run to basically give you that. Well, 
The main thing that we talk about on this channel is liquidity. Liquidity is being very scarce in these longer dated bonds, right? The shorter dated bonds, everyone's buying them up. No problem, like one month, three months, six months, everyone is buying everyone and their mother, right? But those longer term bonds, it's showing cracks in the dam and the treasury is concerned. On top of, they got a piggy bank. We talk about this, the Federal Reserve piggy bank, which is the reverse overnight repurchase agreement or reverse repo, is still sitting at $387 billion. So again, that's in an area where there's a lot of liquidity still there that they can pull from. And this can fund those shorter term liabilities while they incentivize basically buying short term liabilities where they're going to be issuing them and then kind of quelling some of that worries in the longer data bonds. All they're doing is kicking the can down the road. They're actually not solving the problem. They're just kicking the can down the road so that way when Jerome Powell finally starts cutting rates, they can say, okay, everything's fine. We don't have to worry. But here's the problem. If inflation resurges next week, because we got the inflation report coming out next week, right? CPI is on the same day as the Fed meeting. So make sure you guys got your calendar set for that. And the subscribe button enabled so you know when we go live for that, we're going to be streaming that on that day as well. So make sure you guys are subscribed for that. And what is your thoughts on inflation? Do you think this number is going to come in hot? Do you think this number is going to come in lower? I personally think it's going to come in hot because oil was not trading below what it previous was. And that was going to be a positive inflationary pressure on this subsequent report. But then again, that's just my opinion on this matter as well. So throw down what you guys think is going to be the case. Do you think the treasury bond buyback is going to be something that that can be sustained for a long period of time? Again, we're going to keep an eye on the overnight re repurchase agreement to see how much of this piggy bank is going to get eventually drawn down. This will be pressuring this piggy bank to outflow, right? So we're going to keep you guys appraised of that. Make sure you follow us on Twitter. The handle is on the screen now. So make sure you guys go check that out. And last but not least, the fear and greed index is at a fair game for 51. Both the bulls and the bears, I would say the bulls have a skewed advantage based on the price action that was today, but they have a lot of room to run, meaning this market is only getting started where if this thing starts popping off and we get a good CPI report and pal gives you what you want next Wednesday, we could easily see a 10% rally in the markets and even more. So make sure you guys stay tuned for those live streams. Make sure you stay tuned for the next video. And thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one and have a wonderful day.